Hi guys. So we're going to make this Valentine's flower today. So for the stem, um, I use this. It's three gauge, I think, or something. I'll put it on the screen. Um, that's what I used for the stem, and then I just wrapped it with the green color. So either that or you can use actually get a plant thing. Uh, let's go through the yarn. The pot itself is made from this Patton, Patton's, this is bulky, the Shetland Chunky. So the color is, and I love this yarn by the way, the color is just beige. And that's what I used for the pot. And then the heart is this Craft Smart Tomato. That's what I used for the heart. You can use whatever colors you want. And the green, uh, I don't know. I think it's called Lush. It's Craft Smart, yeah, it's called Lush. So those are the colors I used, and then just whatever brown you, you want for the dirt. I'm just gonna use some leftover brown that I have right here. The hooks I used are both a five millimeter and a 4.5 millimeter. And I did use some electrical tape to wrap around the top of my wire. And this stuff looks thick. It is nice and thick. It's perfect for a stem and it's so easy to cut with a pair of scissors. So, um, And then I just used this to wrap around the top so there were no pointy, sharpy parts. That's about it. Let's jump right into it. So we're going to follow the PDF. We're going to follow what the PDF says. So first we're going to make the heart because that's what the, I first did on the PDF was made the heart. Sometimes my PDF might seem backwards to you. <laughs> Most people would make the pot first. but So I made the heart with my 5mm. That's an H hook. And we're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. This is being built in amigurumi, so you're going to need a stitch marker. Now this yarn calls for a 5.5, that's why I'm using a 5. It is pretty thick. Your first round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch round for a total of 12. After your first stitch, see if I can get a stitch marker that's not attached to something. After your first stitch, that's where your marker goes. For the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these stitches. I'm going to weave in my tail. And then that'll be the first hump of the heart. So this is what you should have. This is what it should look like and we're going to fasten off. I 
and we're going to do that again. So that's my second piece. So now I've got two pieces the same and those are going to be my humps. So I've got to sew this one to that one. So I only used two stitches when I sewed my last one together, if that helps. And I just started in the first stitch on the other side of my stitch marker. So my first job is going to be to decrease just so I can get that shape that I want. So I'm going to do four single crochet decrease and you're going to only be able to get around four times or three times, sorry. You're only going to get around three times. So whatever extra stitches you have, just put one single crochet in each of them. If you can manage to get into those spots where you put your sewing, then you can. Um, I don't think it's necessary for this wee little guy. So four single crochet decrease as many times as you can. That's four single crochets. And then my decrease is just going to be a regular decrease. And repeat. So I have 17 stitches. Now the only time I'm going to decrease now is going to be right in the middle of the two hearts. And so I'm going to do an SC2 tog. If you don't have 17 stitches, it's perfectly fine. It's still going to look like a heart. So I wouldn't fret about it. When we sew stuff together, it always happens. Numbers will change. So SE2 tog because we're right in the middle of the heart and I want to bring that together to give this shape. And then just do single crochets all the way back to your marker. So uh, I have 16 stitches. I'm going to do two single crochets and an increase, er, two single crochets and a decrease, and I'm going to bring myself down to 12 stitches. That's number one. That's number two, and then a decrease. You hear that banging? Is just my husband putting something together for my granddaughter's bedroom. So just continue with two single crochets and a decrease. So this is your little heart so far. Uh, we should probably put some stuffing in here. So try not to overstuff it. This is what you should have so far. We're going to keep decreasing. So your next round is going to be one single crochet and a decrease. This will bring it down to eight stitches. Well, it brings me down to eight stitches.
So your last bunch of decreases just going to be, you're going to decrease four times. And then you're going to be done. So that's one time. One more time. Alrighty. So we can still get our hook in there. We need to finish stuffing this. As long as you can get your hook in there, it can be done. If you turn, it helps get the stuffing off your hook. So let's fasten off before these stragglers drive me nuts. Oh gosh, it's hard to even get into the next stitch. It's very close together. Um. I'm gonna do a little bit of a tail because I wanna I wanna wrap the bottom of this around the stem as well because aesthetically aesthetically it'll look better. So let's keep getting our stuffing in there. And then we can just move it around after. I think mine is pretty full. I still have to shove a wire up there. So, I think mine's pretty good. And that's your little heart. So you can move your stuffing around, like I said. So I'm gonna leave my hole open because we're gonna do the, um, the stem and the green part and so we're not going to quite cinch it yet. So first we need to get our stem and figure out how long we want it. So you're going to need a big pair of scissors. And then all you do with this stuff is you kind of crimp it and then you bend it while you're crimping it. There you go. And it pops right off. But these are sharp. That's why I wrap them. So let's wrap them first and then we'll wrap the stem with the green these out of the way. So if you got electrical tape or any kind of tape laying around, just in case somebody tries to grab this and it just ends up that it's poking out somewhere, it shouldn't be poking out. Which I doubt it, but better to be safe than sorry. So, get your green. Find the beginning. Oh gosh. I don't know how this happens to me. I really don't. Alright, so... Take my little green guy and I make a slip knot. 
you don't really need to worry about this part because it's going to be up inside the heart and this part's going to be down inside the pot so you don't really need to worry about um, this type of space so you just wrap So, it doesn't need to be perfect. I got these little bumps where I kind of double wrapped and everything, but it's supposed to be a stem, so you don't have to worry about it being perfect, that's for sure. So, when I come to the other end, I'm going to put another piece of tape, because like I said, this is going to be either down in the dirt or up in the heart. So. It is not going to be noticeable. And then just to be on the safe side of this, I'm going to put another small piece of tape. And then everything's nice and secured. And tape sticks to tape really well, so this will never come undone. So now that we've got our stem, we can just set that aside. But to give you an idea, this just gets shoved right up in there like that. And then we're going to kind of cinch it, and then this will be a wrap just to make it look like, and I'll show you, and make it look like that. So that's the wrap I did at the bottom. So we'll make the leaves. The leaves I did with a 4.5 just because this green is um, just a regular four weight, whereas this tomato red is a worsted. So that's why I changed hooks. Uh, so the leaves are super duper easy. We're going to make two. So we're going to chain 13. That's my 13. In your first stitch you're going to put a slip stitch. In the second stitch you're going to put a slip stitch. So two slip stitches. You're going to do two single crochets. in each stitch. You're going to do two half doubles. You're going to do two doubles. You're going to do two half triples. So we're going to yarn over twice, go into the stitch, Pull through two, then pull through all three. That's a half triple. Do it again in the next stitch. You've got two stitches left. This next one's just going to get a triple. So yarn over twice, go into your stitch, pull through two, three times. Now you're going to chain three. And in this last stitch, you're going to slip stitch. And then pull your slip knot tight. And that's what you should have so far. And now down this side here, working in the round, starting in this first space, you're going to do two half triples. Not in the same space, one in each. So a half triple. The next stitch gets a half triple.
and you're going to do two doubles. Two half doubles. Two singles. Two slip stitches. Alright, I gotta cut this off. I weaved it far enough. And then in this very tippy top space, that's where you're going to fasten off in. So there's another slip stitch to fasten off with a sewing tail. So that's your little leaf. And we'll make leaf number two. I'll put the pattern on this screen and I'll see you right back here. So I've got both my leaves done. And we'll just set those aside. <laughs> kind of just setting everything aside. So we get the pot done. So again, I'm using this uh, Patton's Shetland Chunky. It's absolutely gorgeous yarn. I love it. It's gorgeous. So this um, stitch here that I did is just the moss stitch. It just looks so much better when you do it in a chunky yarn <laughs> so uh, this here on the bottom is a twisted single crochet and then up here I do a front post rim on it to make it look like a pot so that's what we're headed for first things first we're gonna switch hooks going back to my five millimeter because this is a chunky yarn and I'm sure it calls for um, I'm sure it calls for a six. Yeah, it calls for a six millimeter. So um, we're using a five because we are building an amigurumi. So you're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around. So don't forget that your first stitch is the one that gets the marker. So two single crochets in each stitch around leaves you with 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase and this will bring it up to 18 stitches. So that's one single crochet and then the next stitch gets an increase of two single crochets in the same space. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. And this will bring it up to 24 stitches. That's number one. So that's number two. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat.
Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. And this will bring it up to 30 stitches. That's three single crochets and then your next stitch gets an increase. And repeat. So your next round, this is what you should have, your next round is going to be done in the back loops only. And this is how I was able to put this pretty little thing on the bottom. So one single crochet in each stitch, back loops only. So the back loops are easy to find, they're right there. So you don't have to turn anything over or anything. So, this is what you should have. You've got all these front loops. That's what we're going to get into later. So, to put the bottom of the um, pot on. For now, we're going to start the moss stitch. So, PDF users, you're going to see under the word pot um, on your PDF, you're going to see it written with a one single crochet and a half double crochet in brackets and that means in the same space then you're going to see skip one the reason we skip one is because we're putting two two stitches in the same space if we didn't skip one we'd be constantly increasing and we don't want to do that so we skip one because we've already used that space for two stitches so that's the moss stitch. Now a lot of people get it confused with the linen stitch, but the moss stitch is just that. So you can start by putting your first stitch, which is your single crochet, and your marker. And then in that same space, put a half double. Skip one. Next stitch, single crochet. Oops. And a half double. Try to keep it loose. Try not to do this part tight. Skip one, single crochet, half double. So we're not increasing anymore. This is just going to be what we're going to do for the next six rows. Skip one, single crochet, half double. So you can kind of see the pattern now, but this is what it's going to end up looking like. It's a beautiful stitch. So, if you didn't want to do it, I mean, it's pretty easy peasy, but if you're not comfortable, then you can just do one single crochet in each stitch for six rows, or you can do the moss stitch for six, six rows, or any other stitch that you want to do, whether it be a pattern stitch or a regular stitch, you can do that for six rows. So, it doesn't really matter whether you do the moss stitch or not. It's still going to be a pot at the end of the day. So, just meet me back here to do the top part of it and then the bottom part obviously. So for six rows I will see you on the other side. So this is what you should have. So I'm just at my skip one. Um, I am just going to start in the stitch that I'm supposed I'm, I'm actually going to start on the post over here. So this is where my stitch marker was. That's my skip one. My stitch marker. I'm going to start on this post. And this round is going to be front post half double crochet. So just all front posts. Oh, I'm stuck. Oh. 
So I'm going to put a marker here, but I mean, you're going to recognize when you come back around anyway. So because we have two stitches in here, you have to hit every single post. <laughs> so because we did do the skip one, so you actually will have posts that are really close together. Why am I struggling with my half double? So those two posts are really close together because we do our skip one from the moss stitch. So front post, half double crochets. And you'll see that it puts this lip around the top like that. And that's what we want for a pot, for a flower pot. So all front posts, easy peasy. So I'm all the way back around and I've got one post left and my marker's kind of in the way, but I've got this one last post. And then I can fasten off in my marker spot right there. So I want this to look a little bit better in here. So I'm just going to pop up through this next stitch and kind of pull that all together. I'm going to go down the back of those two. This is just to pull everything nice and tight. And then I'm going to just kind of weave at this point, but I wanted to close up that space. So you should have a nice top on it like this. So stuffing's all going inside, so it doesn't really matter what you do with that. But before we stuff it, Actually, it might be easier to do what I'm going to do after we stuff it, but um, we're going to attach back on the bottom and do our twisted single crochets. So only stuff it part way, kind of pack it down to the bottom because that's where we're going to be working. But we still got to do our dirt and then the dirt gets sewn to the underside of this lip. So try, this is supposed to be flat, so try not to over stuff it. We just want a little bit packed down. So when we get back into these stitches, it's not going to be so bad. So find your jog where it jogs there. Make a slip knot. And we're going to reattach on the bottom one because we are working forwards, not backwards. So reattach with a single crochet. It doesn't have to be twisted. Pull up on this loop. This is the important loop to make sure that you keep nice and loose. Go back into that same stitch, grab it, pull up on that loop, and then you're going to turn it yarn over and pull through. That's your twisted single crochet. So go into your very next stitch. Make sure this is loose. This one's loose. Go into your next stitch, pull up a loop, and twist it. And pull through. 
So make sure that gets pulled out. If you don't pull up on that one that's on your hook, it's going to be super duper tight. So pull up. Oops. And twist. So it is a bit of a struggle if you don't pull up far enough that it will be tight. I always end up with it tight a couple of times until I get on get on to it. I don't do the stitch much, but it's a fabulous stitch. So depending on how loose you are, this will have a different look, probably every time you do it. Because it all depends on how much you pull out. It's not meant to be a tight stitch. It's meant to be decorative. A decorative stitch more than anything. And that's what it's going to be. This will also will help sturdy the bottom. So I'm all the way back around. I'm on my very last front loop. Now, generally, when I do this, I'm using a four weight and I would fill in this gap, but because I'm using chunky, I d it's doesn't really matter whether I fill in the gap, so I'm just going to go in anywhere I can and fasten off. So we just need to finish filling that to make it a little more stable. So then you can just tuck these guys around. Tuck these guys away. What did I say around? So because I don't want this to be constantly down, I'm going to weave it up through here first before I weave. And I'm just going to pull it nice and tight, and it'll kind of even that out down there. And then I'm going to go down and weave up with it. That way it doesn't keep getting sucked down. And that's your little pot. Super love this yarn. I absolutely love this yarn. I'm telling you. There we go. So you can finish filling this, and then we'll get the dirt done. We're just about finished. So this helps keep the bottom flat. It helps keep it stable when it's sitting so that your heart will actually sit up on its own. There's a lot of uses for putting this twisted single crochet on the bottom. And aesthetically, it looks pretty sharp. I might know what I'm doing. So I think that's good for my pot. I don't want to overstuff it. So we're going to make the dirt next. Get yourself some brown. The soil I used a 4.5 hook because it's a four weight, but if you've got brown that's not a four weight, then you can use whatever hook you want. I'm using my 4.5 because this is just a regular four weight. I think it's just red heart. So it's just extra, it's just stuff that I had that I couldn't really do anything with. 
Uh, so we're going to make a magic ring, but I don't want you to pull the magic ring tight. I need you to leave a hole. <laughs> so uh, we're going to stick the... Uh, we gotta stick our stick down inside of it, so we'll do a magic ring of six single crochets. So don't pull this tight. So at least leave this much of a hole. Anything that's going to fit that without leaving a gap. So uh, your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. That's number one. Or sorry, two single crochets in each stitch. What am I talking about? Two single crochets in each stitch for 12 stitches. So again, normally we'd be pulling that tight, but we kind of need it open to get this in there. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase, and this will bring it up to 18 stitches. One single crochet, and your next stitch gets an increase. So two single crochets in the same space. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to 24 stitches. That's number one. That's number two. And then your increase. Your last round is going to be three single crochets and an increase, and then we're done. So that is it. You can fasten it off with a sewing tail. I don't have much left of this. <laughs> I almost used the whole one. So when I sewed this on, I sewed it on upside down just so it looked more like dirt because that's the side you get when you turn it over, so that's the side that I use. So this guy needs to get tucked in somewhere on the other side. So I would just drop down this hole and then weave him in somewhere over here. If you don't want to do this, it's fine. You don't have to do what I'm doing, but I think the other side looks more like dirt than this side does. So that's why I do it. I don't think you have to be overly cautious with this. I just waved it a couple of times. It's going to be down inside the pot anyway. This gets sewed 
under the rim. So this rim is the pot rim. So all I did was grab the back loops all the way around. Grab some of my dirt, grab the back loop. So I'm all the way back around with my dirt. <laughs> um, you can make a knot if you want, but I'm just gonna weave, you know, it's, I don't think it's anything that's anyone's gonna be tugging on. It's not really gonna go anywhere. So that is our little pot. So this has to sit concaved. So this kind of sits up and around. And then your little stick goes in here, all in between your stuffing. Like that. And then these leaves get sewn to the bottom. So, as far as these guys go, I'm going to tie them together in a double knot. I'm going to cut these strands off just a wee bit. And I'm going to weave just to pull that knot down and in. So I'm not really weaving, I'm just moving the yarn and I like to do that in the opposite directions sucks that knot right down and you can't even see that it's anywhere there so if you want your leaves to be stiff just mix water with some glue and then use a little paintbrush and you can paint paint your glue water on here it acts like some starch it'll it'll make your leaves stiff if you want them to stay in place so now your heart so just kind of wiggle that into place and then this is where I wrapped my red around and I used a dollop of glue to hold it into place. So, first we're gonna cinch the bottom just so we make it nice and tight. So, make sure that's where you want it to be. Nice and tight. And then I just wrapped it so that it would look a lot better. So I'm coming up onto the heart like this. And with my glue,
And then this here. Once I've got my heart done, I'm just going to keep this pinned until it dries. Sorry, I'm just going to keep this pinned until it dries. And then this here, I'm going to put a big doll up. I kind of let it sink down a little bit. And then I'm going to add my plant back and then that will dry into place as well. And then that's how we do it. So that's our little, still drying, so I don't want to move them a whole lot, but that's our little heart plant for Valentine's Day. I just thought I'd keep it nice and simple. And it can be for both male and female, so it's not too girlish. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.